Welcome to the Intercut Podcast, the weekly show going over the TV, movies, and entertainment that people can't cut away from. I am your co-host, Zachary Shevich, and joining me, he respects women, his mom's his best friend, it's Arturo Zurita! I really hope people get that one. Uh, did you finally catch it? Yeah. What did you think? We both did. I thought it was hilarious. I Thank have you. This, I have this issue that maybe I'll bring up in what we're watching. Uh, that I don't think is a good boys issue. I think it's a modern comedy thing, but I was noticing it during good boys. I, guess I should just say it now. Okay. Uh, it, it, the, the transitions feel like not well pasted together. So the movie felt very like segmented to me. Interesting. In right. Okay. Uh, but that's not what people care about. They care about whether or not it was funny. And I had some Mr. of my biggest belly laughs hey. of the year in it. So you, are you my economics class? I know you're from Econ. <laughs> that must have been the funniest joke that my yeah. brother my brother looked over at me at one of them. He has asthma, right? He looks over at me. He goes, I didn't bring my inhaler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that is good boys that we're talking about. Speaking of a good yeah. boy. Hey. Say what up, Fernando. What's up, guys? It's good to be back. I also thought good boys was absolutely hilarious. That highway scene. I'm glad. Oh, man. Goofy. Yeah. Goofy. Goofy. That was great, yeah. though. Uh, lots of hijinks, lots of laughs, but we're just talking about intercut. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a little bit, we'll talk more about Disney by the week, Amazon's big Lord of the Rings order, Universal Pictures canceling the release of a movie. But first, we want to make sure that you're subscribed to the Intercut Podcast, either the video podcast on YouTube.com slash Intercut Pod or the audio podcast available on most podcatchers. Also, Follow Intercut on social media, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. We are at Intercut Pod. That's at Intercut P O D. That's short for podcast. Hey. Art, Art, let's start the show the way we start it every week here with what we're watching. What you been watching, buddy? Uh, I'm going to have to go back with this one because I did have a 13 Reasons Why binge as of recently. Um, and all I have to say is watch Euphoria. But when it comes to some of the movies that are out, I did go see Good Boys again because I thought it was fantastic. Uh, but I'll let you talk about that one a bit more. I saw Ready or Not. I don't know if any of you guys caught that one. Yep, I caught that one uh, a couple days ago. I yeah. did not. Okay, what did you think about it, Fernando? I thought it was actually really fun. That um, was a very term- fun movie too. Yeah, in terms of Samara Weaving, I thought it was really great. I think she's going to be a breakout. Um, and yeah, just good throws. Like yeah, I think she's starting to already become one uh, as well. But I saw I saw that movie and I thought it was. Uh, I think we'll be bringing it up a little bit later on. But I thought it was a fun watch. I thought it had. Uh it, it was a good popcorn flick. I compared yeah. it a lot to Your Next, and then it turns out a lot of other people are comparing it a lot to that as well, which is really surprising because I remember liking Your Next and people making fun of me for it, and now I guess it's cool. So I'm not complaining because I've always been on the record for saying Your Next is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, I've actually been catching up on some older stuff, uh, and I guess they're not really that old, but you know the way movies like movie news works. <laughs> yeah. Stuff that didn't come out in the last month. <laughs> Big Little Lies. Season one? It's not even season two. I'm in season one. Uh, well, actually, now I'm in season two. Uh, I was so. What do you on, think of it? Uh, of season one, at least. The season one ending was fantastic. I'm actually surprised because I didn't feel as much as you guys did about that it can be its own contained season. I kind of <laughs> wanted to feel that way, and I do have an issue with calling things miniseries and then they're not miniseries anymore. Yeah. But whatever. Um, yeah. Yo, season two. I starting. think the Emmys had an issue with that too. Yeah. Let's talk about that one time, uh, one day in the future. Season one was incredible. Season two might be better. I don't know. I don't know hmm. yet. How many episodes? But Meryl Streep has come out with not only bangers of lines, but let me let me just show you some of my notes right now. Some of the bits <laughs> that I've got since these gentlemen have already seen it. Meryl Streep right off the bat. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. It. She's Meryl Streep. Yeah. You you say that? We, I feel like every time we see a Meryl Streep, uh, anything. Zach and I always have this reaction. We did it for the post. What'd you say? It may seem boring, but it's, it's Mer- still Meryl Streep, you <laughs> know. Tom Hanks like, and I, I think sometimes we 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 don't give proper credit to people like that, mm-hmm. but you we know, take them for granted. Every now a and bit. then, you get a you get a Streep performance like the one in Big Little Lies, where she just completely disappears into a character, and it, it's like you you don't even have words for how 
amazing and captivating she can be in this role. I, I've I'm blown away by her performance in that season. Even Thanks. even through some of the weaker moments, I think she's just so absorbing to watch. I'm only two episodes in. I don't trust short people. Is the most offended I've been in any movie. Um, let's see. There was another thing. I, I love the whole Monterey Five. I can't complain. Actually, I could. Two things that I love in the show is Reese Witherspoon being no different than Clay Jensen. I think she's probably one of the goofiest characters. But this season did uh, uh, something that I find incredible. One is what they're doing with the uh, Zoe's character. Uh, I'm blinking on her name at the moment. Incredible. M- Lady won't even talk to her daughter because she doesn't like her daughter talking to murderers. But on the flip side is Laura Dern's character becoming one of the five. Dude, there's... I don't know. I had to have mentioned it before. The, I have a thing for bad characters then becoming a part of the group that I think is just one of the most... It, that fascinates me. Like, that's one of the most yeah. intriguing things because that shows well, yeah. you're putting effort into your 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 story. Exactly, because, like, I think the situation they found themselves in was that it was fun to have Laura Dern play this antagonist. But was she? Uh, yeah. In the first season, I'm mm-hmm. talking about. Right. We thought that, but, re- but watching it as of recently, Alina would look at me and be like, is she, though? Because if right, her daughter she, she, was getting choked, I would have been louder than Laura Dern. Right. Like, she she ultimately is not really a villain mm-hmm. in the show. She's just Opposing kind of force. annoying yeah. at yeah. some points. But, like, uh, it they do this thing where, well, now we have to do a whole other season of the yeah. show, and we're not going to just write Laura uh-huh. Dern off the show. So they kind of make her better friends with better the rest friends. of the women. The they, best character, second yeah. to Meryl Streep. <laughs> Again, I'm only two episodes in. She said, it's my house she said, I will not I not be you. rich. <laughs> <laughs> she meant it so Dude. much. She said it twice. They did it. They gave her the close up on the second one. Dude, that I'm only two episodes into season two over here. I am loving it. I, I feel bad for not having caught it, caught it uh, earlier. But I mean, there was so much other stuff that came out. It's so much so I've seen some other things. I'm just gonna leave. Succession, I started. We'll get more once I'm a little deeper into it. Yeah. <laughs> it, they got something there. Um, <laughs> spookies, uh, Los Spookies I started, mm, ooh, uh, the spookies. Gemstones I've started, but right now I'm finishing this. I'm finishing this and I like it a lot. What are you guys watching? All right. So art on a big HBO binge, yeah. uh, Fernando, what did you got? Uh, I've also been watching some TV, but over on Netflix, I finished, uh, Mindhunter season two. Like it? Mindhunter. I loved it, dude. Mindhunter season one, I think is one of the best Netflix shows, if not the best i'm trying to think of other ones that do you like zodiac the movie yeah i like zodiac do you think it's a really um, good movie i think so yeah he said mind hunters was his way to fix zodiac yeah and what he would have done different that's it's not really a spoiler but they they even mentioned the zodiac killer in season yeah, two yeah, um going over a lot of similar things, yeah only more in depth and more twisted and zach saw too really zach saw too <laughs> Yeah, so for all the people that are like complaining, like David Fincher hasn't made a movie since Gone Girl, like he's making stuff so right what? here and it's he's great. He's making plenty of stuff, yeah, yeah. producing um, all of it, yeah. And it's crazy because I saw a tweet today saying Mindhunter is a show about like serial killers and death, and not once do they like show like a, a sh- gun isn't shot once in the whole season, mm-hmm. right? Like there's no violence that you actually see, but it revolves around all these like horrible acts that people commit, and it's really like it's super interesting um and i think season yeah. two expands on season one by putting our three main characters into like this position where they have to use everything they've learned um to try to solve this one like case that's like crazy um yeah if i can uh borrow a colloquialism from art mm-hmm. uh i believe season one of mind hunter walked so season two could run or or fly <laughs> or whatever you want to say soar uh, soar because <laughs> Wow. wow, I feel like uh, the show has really set themselves yeah. up in a nice way. Uh, you know, season one obviously has to introduce the ideas of this whole behavioral science and studying multiple murderers. And, you know, they're literally on this show creating language. Nobody uses the term serial killer because it's not an existing term yeah. in their Crazy. world up until Insane. a certain point, yeah. which is what's part of what's amazing about the show. Uh, but season two, they're already established. They already the have a working... Uh, yeah, and and what I think 
ultimately ends up becoming a really interesting thing is the involvement from Ted Gunn, yeah. uh, their new superior at the FBI, who basically sees this behavioral science unit as like a cool opportunity mm -hmm. and is pumping more uh, resources, more, money, more resources behind yeah. it. Do you like him? And really changing what they can do. Do you like his character? I, I mean, it's, I, He's I'm an not, it's not that I'm so... It's not that I'm so like absorbed by his character, but his role in the mm -hmm. universe of the show uh -huh. ultimately has enabled them to do so many things. Yeah. If you've seen it, obviously there's like the whole Manson subplot that basically he initiates. Oof, I got so y'all Manson, so. which y'all need. Oof. Like that was you're the only one who's gonna Oof. get this though. Did you think of the guy from Barry every time that dude came out on screen? <laughs> Uh, I guess until he started Al talking Because Alina kept saying like he reminds me of someone But I don't know who I was like Hank He's like no it's not Hank he looks a little different And I show him the picture of Because uh, you know he did whatever cover it was with blood And I was yeah. like this guy And he's like a little bit what's he from I was like Barry you saw like one episode <laughs> um, But uh, what, yeah. what, are your, what other thoughts do you have Do you, you like it more than season one I, I think so. Just the other thing that interests me a lot is how Zach was saying they have to take all like this language and all this knowledge they've acquired and they have to like convince other people that it works, right? Like all the regular cops, everyone's like, no, we're just going to go with facts. Like, what are your theories? Yeah, that was one of my right? favorite ones from season one when they were telling yeah. everybody. Uh, that's one of my favorite scenes of the entire show. Mm -hmm. Season one, probably episode five, where they sit down with the cops and have to explain to them how they need to talk to people. And I was yeah. like, mm -hmm. whoa. And they're learning how to speak to the cops mm -hmm. so they get it. I was like, wow. Yeah. And throughout all of that, the show is trying to reach us so we're not bored. Mm -hmm. It's insane. Insane. So and much language is happening here. There's like the casting, like all the people that like, um, the guy who they got to play Charles Manson, who was also in Once Upon a Time and was like <laughs> wasted. But in this, Harriman. yeah, in this one, he was great. Um, yeah, son all the Sam killers, Son of Sam guy, Berkowitz. Yeah, they're that's crazy. So uh, that's definitely the same. I do want to ask you one more question before you lead to your other ones, because Zach and I did have this conversation uh, <laughs> last time we recorded afterwards. What do you think of the intro vignettes? I think they're interesting with BTK. Because mm -hmm. he doesn't yeah, get caught till 05. Yeah, I think they're interesting. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's definitely, we're going to get more seasons, hopefully. I think they said that they're pushing for maybe five seasons i think i read somewhere so i read the same I mean, thing yes uh, i'm i'm cool if we get to see more zach and i had talked about this and we think it's very interesting that they're doing a breaking bad season two type thing mm. where they set you up with him doing something because it's supposed to contradict uh season two of breaking bad has those intros i'm sure some of you remember them uh dealing with a pool but with this one, it's that every time he's shown doing something, even though they're, no, they're what are we, in 1981, yeah. <laughs> years off, it's supposed to not necessarily balance, not always contradict, stuff that they're figuring out. Because if you remember, one of Holden's biggest lines is, yeah, but serial killers can't live normal lives. Yeah. This man was a president and of a church. this guy managed to for many, many years. Yeah. It's intriguing. Uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, uh, Fernando was talking about one of the fun things about the show is uh, the ways in which they are teaching these different units about these behavioral sciences and kind of trying to establish new norms. Uh, I've seen some writing about the show that has called into question that whole idea about, like, should we really be, uh, like, praising these guys who are doing, the, doing this work that isn't necessarily, like, uh, it hasn't always shown to be Effective. correct yeah, yeah, yeah. you know uh but that doesn't necessarily to me to me that's not what the show is doing yeah. i think the show is preparing us for uh some some cases where they're going to be humbled where they're not going to be so right that uh, I just oh think, you hit it right and, on the dot you're watching the show I, knowing they have something in store right doesn't that feel good yeah. watching shows where yeah. you know they have something in store for you i'm excited for it uh, I'm going to do a couple quick ones for my what I've been watching because we've already taken a little bit of time here. But uh, something that pe our, our commenters really have wanted us to watch. Uh, I didn't check out Patriot, but I checked out <laughs> Perpetual Grace oh, Limited. How is it? The other show from Steve Conrad. This one is on Epics. Uh, I have two things that I want to talk about here. First of all, Perpetual, Perpetual Grace itself. It's a pretty interesting show. I think... Uh, it's a little bit similar in some ways to Breaking Bad in that it takes uh, it kind of tr takes the 
structure of a thriller and sort of slow plays it. Uh, it's very like conversational. It's these long scenes uh, with people sort of navigating around each other and ultimately one upping each other. There's a lot of like dark humor in it. I think it, you know, it really functions best as a comedy at points, but there's these great performances. You got Jimmy Simpson on the show, Ben Kingsley on really? the show, Terry O'Quinn is on this show, uh, Kurtwood Smith is on this show, a lot of really good actors. And Damon Harriman, the guy who plays <laughs> Charles Manson, is really funny on Perpetual Grace as well. Uh, so th it's a really good cast. I, I, you know, I don't know if it has quite uh, as gripping a uh, pace as Breaking Bad does. It's very gingerly paced. But I'm really into the characters and the ways in which uh, this situation just gets increasingly complex. It took me maybe four episodes to really figure out the rhythms of the show. Damn. But I think Steve Conrad's a really interesting writer. There's a lot of very funny back and forths. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I hope more people get to check this one out. But that leads me to my second point. The show is on epics. D do you know how to watch epics? Like, I wish sometimes that, that I could just tell you that I have a bit before you ruin the joke, but I was going to ask you one question about the show. How do I find epics? Where do I go for that? <laughs> the thing is, is I'm not so phone? sure how to tell you. Is it in a uh, theater? Might, you might need to like send out smoke signals or something because a as far as I know, the, a lot of people don't know how to uh, get epics. I actually put up a poll on my Twitter. And Wait, can you I like really not go to epics.com? I don't think you... Maybe you can. I haven't even... I, don't know if I, <laughs> I have to hire that. someone to install a dish in order to be able to even receive Epics. I it's basically weird, found right? out that my... I found out that my smart TV has the Epics app. Mm. And I opened it basically to check whether or not it works. Wow. And I, ha I, and I have Epics, guys. Um, well, when I come over for New York Film Fest, I'll watch it with you. Hey, and whenever yeah, you we'll watch it. We'll do a Pennyworth deep dive. Hey, and when you... <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. We're gonna binge the entire series. They can let you exp let us explain on it. Uh, yeah, I've always thought about that because on my remote I have Crackle, and I pressed it once and it never loaded. So I was like, okay, that was completely pointless. So yeah, I've I've thought that too. I keep seeing a bunch of things for Epics, but not the actual channel itself. I don't even know where to give my money to if I wanted to watch it. But it's interesting. I, I know a, a lot of our uh, a lot of our viewers keep mentioning LTD. Grace, LTD, LTD Grace. Yeah, Perpetual Grace Limited, LTD sure for Limited. So what's the point of the uh, title? Because it reminds me a lot of The point Adam of the Shrug. title is it's the, it's the name of the church that Ben Kingsley runs, but I think it's just kind of like a cover mm -hmm. for how they get money. And the plot is super convoluted. It's, it's Sounds honestly like Ozark. impossible to explain. It, it, it actually, in tone, I think it's most close to Ozark. Which than, we always uh, call the else. Breaking Bad Netflix. Like, Not like, B minus yeah. Breaking Bad is my, <laughs> yeah. my favorite. Exactly. Character. Ozark. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel like this is similar in that sense in that it's like this kind of like crime that feels like it's going on underneath the surface of polite society, if you know what I'm saying. That sounds like you're pretty intrigued. I also really liked Glow season three. Glow is back on Netflix. Uh, I th it's always been one of my favorite Netflix series. I think it's a, d a show that does a really great job of creating character and sort of using this premise to get a lot of really interesting uh, confrontations between its characters. It's a great hangout show. It's fun to be with this group mm -hmm. of people. And season three might have kind of figured out exactly the right formula and balance for it. Uh, for people who aren't caught up or don't remember, uh, the season, the third season opens in Las Vegas where they're now kind of doing like a residency mm -hmm. in a casino. So because the show is a little less reliant on like we have to do a new wrestling show, we have to we have the ups and downs yeah. of it because they're more stationary. It, now the problem it, becomes it allows them to yeah, it allows them to kind of just like interact with each other and get bored of their situation. Yeah. And, and and I think this season does the best job of giving everybody in the cast something to do. I agree. So when you if you're a big fan of like the ensemble show, for me, Glow is be doing it better than just about any other show on TV, uh, whether it's the drama, whether it's the comedy. I'm just I'm really into how it's done. Uh, that sixth episode is really, really great. The seventh episode is good too. Shouts to Allison Brie, who I saw directed it. Really? Uh, I, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, so it's definitely one of my favorite shows still. I, I hope more people check out 
uh, glow because I have this weird feeling like it might not be coming back. It feels like they're pulling back on the advertising for the show. We just recently had a little tidbit that we had recently with our good boy Kevin who said that yeah. a lot of the pitches for Netflix is that they like keeping it a contained three seasons. <laughs> that is very so. interesting, yeah. We'll see whether that's that it's crazy. Come back because they it ended on a cliffhanger. So I really, I need, I'm only I five episodes in, uh, which yeah. I, I remember getting on the show because of you. I was watching Intercut and uh, they had recommended it. I was like, wow, that's a great recommendation. <laughs> no, I remember you recommended me season one and I binged it all in a day and a half. I was like, yeah, I think you you put it perfectly. It's the perfect hangout show. You like mm-hmm. actually hanging out with these people. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's what we've been watching. Let us know what you've been watching in the comments down below or by emailing us at intercutpod at gmail.com. We will move on to yay or nay, where we break down the latest happenings in entertainment, starting with a slew of new Disney Plus news was released in the past couple of weeks. But something that slid under the radar was the detail that Disney Plus will release episodes week to week rather than all at once the way that Netflix and Amazon currently do. Art, yay or nay, Disney Plus is making a smart decision choosing to release week to week. Uh, I have two. Yay and yay. Yay for me personally. I I can't do these 13 all at once episodes, dude. I really can't. I, I think we I think it ran its course and I think we're good with it. <laughs> Sick. I like this. And that leads me to the second one from a business perspective. I, first and foremost, think we can hate them, but Disney really does know what they're doing. And I think doing it from this perspective is going to change something. Netflix tried it, but they tried it on their worst shows. That Ike Harley spinoff, now they're adults, whatever it was. No, like that was dumb. Uh, Do you know what shows they're doing it for off the top of the head? I believe it's supposed to be like all of their shows. Uh, Oh, like even the Star Wars one. Yeah. It's perfect. You ready? Why? Why would you dump everything at once and right. not have it be a weekly thing where now you exactly. have expanded oh my gosh you need to subscribe to Disney Plus for this thing oh, okay I'll get on it doesn't hear anything about until the next release but if Mandalorian's getting released weekly you want to hop on the train yep. you're gonna get Disney Plus oh my gosh I just got it you ready this was a perfect thing that we just had with the conversation uh, what did Kevin say Kevin said I don't need Hulu right now what do we right. do with HBO Man, well, I mean, I keep it, but a lot of people do what? Game of Thrones back on? Subscribe. That, okay. When Game of Thrones Whoa. is on. What's the next yeah. one? All right, I'll, I'll get it when it's done. Releasing it all at once can cause anyone to just come and use it for a month. But if Mandalorian's... Yeah. That series going on yeah. for three months, not only does it keep your subscription longer, you're also on the app longer to get addicted to more things. It's smart. It's genius. And for my health, I appreciate it because I cannot be watching 11 hours worth of television one day. Yeah. Yeah, selfishly, as a person in uh, the business of commenting on media, I'm really glad that I don't have to do any more, like, I won't have to do any 10-hour Disney Plus binges Bro, this was, just to, like, this comment on a show before yeah, yeah, exactly. people forget about it. And even just a regular uh, person, too. Like, even if you're yeah. not making videos, if you're just doing it for entertainment, it's sort of like, yo, I can't go on Twitter or else they're going to spoil it for me. Yep. That's, right. a cra- that's, that's another aspect of it because that's been a huge It's tough thing. and it... Uh, again, just speaking from the perspective of a normal person, uh, you know, it's frustrating when you're with your friends and it's like, oh, what episode are you on? How far are you? Can we? What can we talk about? You guys like, with it, me on Big Little Lies, even though that did come out weekly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I, for one, actually like this. And I mean, Netflix, oh, you're a big fan too. It, Dope. Cool. Yeah. Net, Netflix, I think, did a smart thing in breaking up the model and kind of making this all at once thing a, a normal thing and it does some one it does work for Netflix in some ways but I do think there are times where you have a big event maybe like Stranger Things yeah. and it fades from the conversation faster because oh you my drop goodness. it and people watch yes. it all in one yeah. weekend and, and or then people I never got to it finish it and it's like if you're getting reminded weekly of the new episode you will think of Game of Thrones that's how that yeah, worked exactly. I think that's perfect I think Disney just found a way what was the conversation around Game of Thrones when's gonna be the next big event what bigger event than not even needing HBO and well I mean HBO kind of works as like a streaming service now too with Now and Go but everyone is kind of gonna have Disney Plus and they're <laughs> really gonna make some big event stuff it's just gonna happen It yeah mm-hmm. it's crazy As cable and streaming shows have grown in popularity, the average episode count on an American TV show lowered to between like 10 and 13 episodes per season. I've been praying for this. 
particularly for the high cost prestige TV. Amazon is choosing to go in the opposite direction with their upcoming big budget Lord of the Rings series. Its first season is apparently set to run 20 episodes. Art, yeah or nay? Amazon going for a full 20 episode first season will be helpful for Lord of the Rings. All at once? I think so. I don't know if who Amazon does the week to week thing for their shows. They did for the Crazy. that Mad Men one. Oh, Remember? Romanovs. So maybe it will be a week to week. They better thing, like, be a week to week. Did, one, they did maybe hours. two in one week or something like that? Maybe. Uh, okay, I'd be cool with that too because then that's 10 weeks, right? Yeah. If, if you're doing 20 episodes, sheesh, 20? That's that's the running time of the first movie. Like, I, that's too much for me. <laughs> that's way too much for me. That said, uh, this is the live action Lord of the Rings series that we had talked about back in the day, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, is yeah. it retelling the story? Is it telling a new story? What did we decide with this? It is a prequel, prequel. I believe. Yeah. Hour long episode. Young episodes? Aragorn. I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Dude, what are you talking about? See, when we you had just said it, it, the Netflix one works sometimes, I'll, I'll tell you exactly when it works. American Vandal. Mm-hmm. If, if you're thinking be under 30 minutes, there's no better. What always gets lost? Independent movies in the mixture of all the big stuff. Uh, comedies get lost a lot in the mixture of all the big stuff. So it probably doesn't help to do weekly series. But Lord of the Rings can do a weekly series, whereas yes. um, Big Mouth can drop all at once, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some of the other working moms can drop all at once. But like, It's the stuff that's a little less heavy, a little more bingeable. Yeah. You know? it, if you have to pay attention to a thing and really absorb it, you, you yeah. want to have concentration and you don't have like 20 hours to concentrate Yo, What was your show row. growing up? Like mine was lost, right? And I, I, I was uh, I was about to say lost. Dude, and how were those discussions from week to week, right? Amazing. No, that the made the show, dude. And, when yeah. you rewatched it, you didn't have that there. Or even more than that, it's like you're rewatching with somebody who's like, wait till this big point. It's like, oh, that's big. What's next? Let's go. So that big moment in episode three for Lord of the Rings. Dope. There's 18 more episodes, 17 more episodes. You get what I mean? That's what you were saying yeah. earlier. It takes away from that big moment that you can have people talk about for a week, like we did for yeah. Game of Thrones and a lot of other things. So, yo, one, I don't care if it was weekly. 20 <laughs> episodes is way too long. In my yeah. mind, uh, I have loved us being accustomed to the 10 episodes. So it's going to be a big nay for me. I, I am going nay because this is Lord of the Rings, which already feels really long, mm-hmm. and this is a prequel. Uh, y- you know, I think I would be more inclined for a, a different type of show because I think I do miss some of the longer hangs. You know, I, in this age where we do have these 10-episode shows and 13-episode shows, uh, I actually heard this really interesting analogy recently that watching TV used to feel like being in a relationship and now it just feels like dating around. <laughs> Where you used to like really settle in with the show for yeah. 20 weeks and catch the new episodes and be with it from like fall until spring. And now it's like, you know, I, I just uh, I dated Fleabag for six episodes. That was really fun. You're right. Yes, you are right. Because you, you devoted so, a day for them, dude. They were your Monday. Right. Yeah. And it's like I, I don't want to personally date lord of the rings but I'd, I'd love to be in a relationship with a show for a little on the while side, yeah a little bit yeah. <laughs> I, I just i well again here's the other thing too as we always clarify when we're talking about stuff that has yet to come out we end up judging the final product uh, we haven't seen any thing from this thing yet so i mean we'll see how it plays out what if they do end up being like 30 minute vignettes or something like that and i say vignettes right. because 30 minutes to a lord of the rings extended cut feels like a vignette so i don't know we'll see how it plays out but from what you're telling me and from what it sounds like that idea i'm no to unless they end up fernando you prepared to hang for 20 hours in uh, lord of the rings pre yeah i was actually gonna say i like i could play Devil, devil's advocate a little bit and you say would. yay just because um because of that what you said like well, I used to watch like all the TV episodes or shows that run that long. To me, what comes into my head are like CW shows that have like fifteen, yeah. like seventeen episodes, right? And I remember when I when Arrow and Flash like it, it first came out, I would devote like my Monday and Tuesday, I would watch that at night, right? So if it comes out weekly, I think it could work maybe. Mm-hmm. But if it comes out all at once, yeah, that's insane, right? Yeah, twenty exactly. episodes, <laughs> yeah. 
Warner Warner Bros. is bringing bringing back Lana Wachowski to write and direct a fourth Matrix film starring Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss. This will be the first new Matrix movie since 2003. Initial reports suggest that while Lawrence Fishburne won't be back, the character of Morpheus may appear as his younger self. Art, yay or nay, you're ready to re-enter the Matrix. Yeah, why not? Uh, I I, some, I kind of worry that it's because of the they saw the memes and they're like oh the Keanu Sans is upon us and decided mm-hmm. to do that but yeah uh, I'm I've I, I've yet to revisit the Matrix from my older perspective I've only seen it for like the iconic stuff I remember as a kid I have yet mm-hmm. to I don't even have my Matrix open I got my Blu-ray it's not even opened <laughs> um, so I have to revisit it and what's interesting is that they're all free I don't know if you guys know this but you can catch all of the Matrix movies for free on Vudu. I believe maybe on YouTube, they're, they're free with ads. They You can watch them anywhere, which I think is really cool. So plug to whoever. I noticed that the <laughs> other day. It's a, it's a quick little segment here and also relating to the other yays. Did you know like a lot of kids use YouTube and Vudu and like the ads as their new cable? Mm-hmm. Like they use yeah, the free yeah. channels on stuff and it's like, yo, I caught that. And I noticed this because whenever we made videos from two years ago, when those movies entered that syndication. Right. I, I see them and I see that they're kids and I was like, that's really intriguing to me. That's your new basic cable. That's crazy. Um, yay to this. Why isn't the sister coming along? Why isn't the, why isn't it the duo? Yeah, that is an interesting uh, situation. Uh, Lily Wachowski doesn't seem to be involved. I don't know why they haven't talked about why. Uh, so we'll find out eventually. I, I don't know if that's something to be concerned about. I'm not concerned about it. Did the Corn Brothers uh, ever do a movie without each other? I think they've done a couple, right? I don't believe they have actually. They've always done them together. Yeah, I mean they they used to not always split credit for things, but they always did them together. Hmm. Okay, I thought they were okay. All right, all right. Then you, know, I'll compare it. To Maybe this. somebody can correct me in the comments below. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, look, this is a. I think the Matrix is one of our more iconic recent pieces of action film. Yep. Uh, I think it still has distinctive qualities to it, and it, it's different enough from the majority of what we get in action, visually speaking, that I'm excited to revisit it uh, just as a piece of intellectual Oh, revisiting, property. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't know where the story's going to go, but keeping a, a Wachowski, even if it's not both the Wachowskis involved, sounds good to me. So, yeah. What I'm does it have it. to do? To me, the standards are way too high. I don't even know why you would even consider it. At this point in time, you have to be better than Avatar. Bro, you're the Matrix. Yeah. Right. Although that movie didn't necessarily make like Avatar money. No, 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 but no, no, no. That's not what I mean. Yeah, it's it's gonna have to be very, very. What are you doing? That, like, dude, you created the, to this day. Right. Red like, pill, it's, blue it's pill legacy is, everywhere. is bullet time and stuff yeah. like that, and it doesn't necessarily have a technical uh, advancement. Although, you know, if you look at what the Wachowskis have done, there they are very visually. Uh, thought the forward thinking uh-huh. filmmakers from Speed Racer to Cloud yep. Atlas. So I'm sure she's not going to uh, make this film without some kind of visual flair. Easily, yeah. for sure. Uh, after the Oscars went hostless earlier this year and no one seemed to mind, the Emmys are following suit with a hostless ceremony of their own. Art, yay or nay, you'd like the hostless award show trend. To be honest with you, not at the Emmys. I've always been a big fan of every single person at the Emmys. I'm going to have to hit you with a nay on this. Fernando, do you feel the same way? Um, I think so. I think the Emmys have done a better job consistently right? over the last years Amy than the Oscars. Amy Poehler and yeah. um, uh, Tina Fey. I know yeah. a lot of people may not be the biggest fan of Ricky Gervais, but I, I, I'm not seventy percent of the joke bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so to like not have anyone, mm-hmm. I'm curious. I don't know. Oh, yeah, wait, I'm mean, saying so, Emmys. I'm t- I'm thinking Golden Globes. My bad. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just say. looking that up because. Yeah. Okay. Then. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Why not? <laughs> I'm thinking Golden yeah, Globes. I, mean, I don't know why. I'm going to go yay that I'm for it only because we saw what we saw happen at the Oscars was they still don't really know how to do the ceremony without a little bit of guidance. Like we didn't have a host, but we still had an opening monologue. Yo, you know, how you going to have a screenplay for the Oscars? That's so trash. But within that screenplay, you're giving out an award for a screenplay. Right. I don't know. You know, I think that ultimately 
the way that we Ugh. present awards necess- necessitates a funny person to kind of like do some patter. Mm-hmm. Whether or not that person is called the host is not the part that matters to me. True. And maybe it'll put a little bit more of an emphasis True. on the awards themselves. Agreed. Yeah. I'm going to go back and say yay too because I just looked up who the last hosts were and yeah. Was... Next. Uh, Andy Samberg and uh, Sandra Oh, I believe, hosted the last Emmys, right? Or is that the Golden Globes? That was the Golden Globes. I, th- I think that was the Golden Globes. Who who were the last hosts? Uh, Colin Jost and um, oh right, oh, get that man out of here, bro. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. All right. So uh, that does it for yay or nay. Let us know your thoughts on those topics in the comments below. Or again, you can email us at intercutpod at gmail.com. We're going to move on to the interview. Hey. Where we take questions from you, Shout the intercuties. Shout out you guys. Shout out Carly Samora for the really nice comments and being a loyal viewer of everything in the ATZ. Oh, LME yeah. Sure. Yeah, that was really network. nice. I was reading through some of them and that one really stood out. I sent it to Zach immediately. Uh, yeah, that I like that. It's 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 great. We appreciate you guys. Yeah. We also got a really great email from Steven who hit us with a few questions. First of all, he wanted to know our thoughts on the canceled release of Universal and Blumhouse's The Hunt. We're going to talk about that in our topic of the week Mm -hmm. so that's coming up but he also asked us for our thoughts on the upcoming sequel to the bay although none of us have actually seen the the first first one one, am i right i know about it uh or impelli i know it's about a literal disaster that happened but i always confuse the bay for the documentary movie that's out there about also, the bay. It's actually the cove. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So I've always confused mm. the two for whatever reason. I never caught the bay, but I've always loved the, uh, the. it looks like a brain. Yeah. Uh, that's what I've always thought it looked like. It always looked really creepy. Yeah, I've never yeah. seen the movie though. I haven't heard about a sequel, but when we searched it up, we saw that there was a TV series that's out. I don't know if that's related, but. Uh, yeah. Steven says it's it. incredible. So we're going to have to try oh, and catch well, up on incredible. that one. We also got a question about the use of social media in films that have nothing to do with social media because some people want to watch movies to escape from things Mm -hmm. like social media. What do you think, Art? I would need more examples for this, but I kind of get what he's saying because cell phones. Yeah. I think there's a huge difference when you incorporate cell phones into a movie or when you don't incorporate cell phones into a movie. And I see a lot of period pieces taking place in the 80s or 90s because we can't make this. They get caught. They would get caught immediately in today's technology. So you have to set the story back a little bit more. When it comes to technology, I mean, I tend to ignore all the bad stuff and gravitate towards the um, euphoria ones. Where it's like, mm-hmm. this is embedded, it is integral to yes. the story. Uh, so, I agree with what he's saying, though. There's a lot of movies where they incorporate it just to incorporate it. Any Netflix movie starring uh, Noah Centineo, <laughs> Centineo, whatever his name is, there you yeah. go. I agree with you. <laughs> Noah Centineo. Yeah, yeah, it's literally doing it. And I feel like if this is the perspective you're talking about, if not, follow back up. I, that idea of like, ugh, this is annoying to deal with in social media and everyone's always angsty, whatever else. Like, imagine trying to ignore film Twitter. And then just finding it again when you're watching uh, that that Netflix movie where they're like, oh, you like that movie? Oh, yeah, I talked about it. There was one where uh, there's a Netflix movie, Not the Perfect Date or Swiped, which are the exact same movie, which includes Noah Centennial, yeah, yeah. whatever his name is, using apps that can easily be developed like that because, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, right? Because we all, know, we all yeah. come out coding out the womb. Yeah. Um, and I think exactly. it's the exact same actor who plays his friend who does it too. Uh, it's dumb and it's just like this looks – idiotic mm-hmm. then yeah I, I, go for go it ahead, no ahead. i mean that's that's i was just gonna keep <laughs> complaining about noah <laughs> uh i i don't know specifically what this question is referring to because there are cases where uh you've mentioned you mentioned euphoria i'm gonna mention another movie you love searching mm-hmm. where like the the social media is so integral to calls what it those out. films literally do calls it out that, yeah. that like i don't think you can do those movies with social media. I don't think that's what this email about mm-hmm. is about. I think this is more about uh, when social media is just kind of like hooked into a movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, like I think I can't think of many off the top of my head. I know there's something similar in Wreck It uh, or in the Wreck It Ralph sequel, <laughs> but. Uh, whenever a movie does that weird plot line of, oh, we just need to make a video go super viral, or you had this embarrassing moment and it went super viral on YouTube, 
I feel it bothers me because they seem to have no understanding of, of social how media works. Yeah. And yeah, so it, it's it's to me, it's just about whether or not you have that understanding of what social media is, how people use it, and is it integrated well 100%. into your movie. Like texting, I think, is something we're seeing more and more and more. You have to. It's a part. Because yeah. It's a big part of modern life. Mm-hmm. So if you know how to do it in a cinematic, compelling way, go for it. Otherwise, like, don't just, bother. Just try to stop trying to reach to the kids. Yeah. <laughs> we get it. Yeah. Uh, I had a question for Art. How do you feel about Searching 2? Let me tell you about this right here. So Searching 2, as you know, uh, I liked it. I liked the first one. A um, little bit. I'm excited for it. Because of what they came out talking, the uh, director said that they were going to make it its own anthology type story. Right. And that he was going to... It's not with the same characters. It's not the same characters, which I'm a really big fan of. Uh, they were. He said he's like, my goal, which was... A, when we had the conversation with him in the first one, a very big thing about it was to put emphasis on hiring you know, minorities as actors, to be able to give them the opportunity, very much mm-hmm. in the style of Jordan Peele with Get Out, saying that that's who he's interested in. Now, not that there's not going to be, you know, other ethnicities there, which is very easy to get twisted because people want to get mad for it. Yeah. But, like, yeah. he wanted, he wanted, if he's been given the opportunity, if they've been given the opportunity to be able to make these films, they want to be able to bring in independent art, like, not just John Cho, right? But, like, yeah. actual, like, we'll see if they actually do it. Other minority characters, uh, actors to, to come in and be able to portray the story, have it be original, but also have it kind of be a setting off point where the VHS series, I've been covering a bunch of movies. Wow. Did all of those people who worked on VHS make it? Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Like that was inc- like after doing this, it, it went from like, wow, there's another person who worked on VHS to I got to get some respect to the VHS franchise for highlighting all of these people to become something even bigger and it's interesting to see when you look at the connections it's like oh it's the same company still bringing them into work if that's what he's creating here an it, it, it almost incubator yeah. how mm-hmm. can i not say well that's something that blumhouse has made really uh, a standard with a lot of their horror franchises is uh they've exactly been able what to replicate about. them and create multiple in- iterations mm-hmm. of them yeah. and use them as launching pads for filmmakers who who have ideas oh, I, who have something yeah. to say uh, so, so yeah, that, that'd be excellent if that's what this ultimately is. And, uh, yeah, go ahead. Still searching. Can't be searching, too. That's your... It can't be searching, no. too. That's lame. Still searching, though? Yeah. The search continues. Yep. Uh, I, I think what's cool is that really what we're talking about with searching is like a format for a film, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's there's a way to just sort of take the structure of searching and apply it to something completely different. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when so exciting. See, a lot of times when we see these movies that make a lot of money and then are sort of like, you know, Jerry rigged into a franchise, Uh. it feels like oh well, and and that's how searching feels. Is that the first film feels like you can't really make a sequel to it? Well, this isn't a sequel. It's a installment Mm -hmm. a follow-up dealing with that which really as we were just talking about hold on i got my french toast coming in uh as we were just (laughs) talking about brought to you by (laughs) cinnamon toast crunch french toast thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you oh sorry what is it almond crunch french toast oh almond crunch did you use a different one oh interesting this has never happened in an intricate episode but we're brought to you by food uh lena brought me food who you can find on our Midsomar intercut. See, it was all a plan yeah. just to be able to plug in the Midsomar intercut exactly. episode. But no, I agree with what you were saying. We were talking about the social media aspect of it. And if you take that and are able to create just different stories dealing with social media as it evolves, one of the things that we did when we were interviewing Seb, what did he tell us? He says, as we were making it, we realized it was a period piece. Mm-hmm. And that threw mm-hmm. us back a little bit because like, what do you mean? It's like, Facebook changed three months after we had recreated the Facebook page. So we knew at that point, oh, well, that's got to be in 2012. Yeah, right. And I was like, that's really intriguing to me. So I, I'm i excited for it. I'm excited to see what they do with it. Uh, yeah, just call it still searching. <laughs> uh, and then lastly, I wanted to bring up Quentin Tarantino talking about his 
tenth and potentially final movie. He's been talking about uh, wanting to make a horror movie. What do you guys think? Is this the way you'd like to see Quentin Tarantino, Tarantino potentially make his final film? Fernando, do you have any thoughts? I think it would be interesting, um, definitely, because it seems like he's covered such a wider range of genres. To have a horror movie be his final one would be really interesting. Um, wasn't he also still talking about Star wanting Trek? to make that Star Trek, that hard, that rated R Star Trek movie? Yeah, and that also goes into the whole idea of whether or not you believe him that he's only going to make 10 movies yeah. and retire. I do. You do? I do. Interesting. You want to know why? Why? He said at the Cannes Festival, he's given his life for us. Mm-hmm. And he says, now it's time for him to live his life. And he's having a baby. Really? I think that's the thing that does it. I truly, I truly, truly <laughs> believe that's the thing that does it. Because he could hit us with a Soderbergh and be like, I'm retiring. And then comes back and make like five, oh, that's five, what five movies. He's going to find some way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or like, this isn't a movie. This there. is a limited series. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Think that's personally what I believe. I do think he's going to give us 10 movies because he's very big on like wanting to have that final stuff. Mm-hmm. Still think um, Once Upon a Time should have been the final one. Hmm. Yeah, but that also, feels more like a conclusion. It does. It feels like a conclusion, but isn't that Tarantino? To yeah. not make that the conclusion, have that be the second to last, have that be the ninth. Uh, yeah. But we also talked about the cheat codes. One, Kill Bill 3 all of a sudden counts as one. Right. So how many cheat codes is he going to have? But also the cheat code of like, hey, you supposedly don't like streaming, but how much they help you out with your last movie, Hateful Eight, and them mm-hmm. hosting the entire thing. And you had full creative rights over that. You like that though, don't you? Yeah. Hey, yeah. where's that? F- how long is the cut of um, Once Upon a Time? Who do you think is going to host that? You know, so I think he has a very interesting career in streaming and producing and in writing that he has coming up for him. But I also think he has a he has a it's going to be interesting seeing him as, as a dad. Yeah, uh, it'll be interesting. Maybe he'll get new some new inspiration. Maybe he'll want to make his first kids movie. Uh, Prisoners we'll, we'll too. Find out. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so make sure to leave us a question in the YouTube comments or by emailing us at intercutfod at gmail to get it featured on our next show you can also reach out to us on Twitter on Facebook or Instagram our handle is at intercutpod on all three that's intercut P-O-D that's short for podcast be an intercutie send us your movie TV and entertainment questions that's all for interview we're going to move on to our topic of the week and as teased it is about Universal Pictures canceling the release of The Hunt. Uh, This follows some controversy around the movie after its advertising campaign drew the ire of a lot of conservative news publications. It also was brought up in the news after the recent mass shootings uh, that were that we experienced here in the U.S. So uh, ultimately, Universal decided now is not the time to release this movie. But Art wanted to know what you thought about the idea of are of Universal pulling the plug on this movie due to recent events. Do you think anyone would have said anything if the movie got released and no one put attention to it? Oh, no, not at all. And I, I, I know that something that you want to talk about is uh, the similarities to oh, is there another mo- movie. Oh, is there a movie that- out right now called Ready or Not? That's under <laughs> right. Disney and they released it, no problem, and no one is saying anything? Yeah, I feel like a lot of the times... Um, I was gonna tell you guys. Yeah, premise. I was gonna tell you guys something. It was actually pretty big, um, but I won't tell you now. Makes you what? More intrigued for whatever the heck I need to tell you. Right. It's the interview effect, right? Mm-hmm. Where like suddenly this is now the hot, interesting uh, subject, and and we're talking it, it about it. Yeah, and and I think that it ends up putting a lot of import around a thing that isn't necessarily important. Yes. Now, uh, you know, this is this is a movie from Craig Zobel, who I think he's a filmmaker that we like a lot. Mm-hmm. He did uh, Compliance. He did Z for Zachariah. Mm. But these are not exactly like he did Z for Zachariah. Yeah, bro. The documentary. No, no. you're thinking. Oh, I'm thinking Z for Zachary. You- Holy dude, you made me flip out for a second. I was like, how is that even possible? You understand why I was so surprised. <laughs> Dear Zachary. Oh my gosh. Oh, Z for Zachary, that's the one with... Um, Chueta Legia for Margot Robbie. Yeah, that one can go. I remember making a video for that one. That was, yeah, no. Oh, Dude, I was like, I was really mad. Because I have another point that I'm going to bring up on what really ticks me off the most. Mm-hmm. But continue, because I also do want to bring up stuff yeah, like... But- 
Uh, so this is a guy that isn't really ha- doesn't really have a history of making major blockbuster films. Yeah. This is going to be this is a film that was being released with Blumhouse, and they do have this uh, corner of the market where they make pretty successful films. But it's hardly you know uh, the kind of massive event that I think a lot of people ended up putting the kind of uh, weight around it for. And ultimately, I think some of that weight ended up being because this script had allusions to real life ideas that are a little bit more explicit than uh, the allusions to real life ideas in Ready or Not. Mm. I believe that uh, it was Hollywood Reporter, maybe it was Variety, uh, that reported that the word deplorable is used in the script and obviously that has a connotation if you are are, are an american you're stupid if you don't think the word deplorable you know that's one of those like oh well, we can't say that word yo homie when was the last time you used the word deplorable you know yeah and then there yeah, is also a line a little... in the script uh that refers to the rat fucker in chief uh and i am fairly certain that if you are an american at least you know what we're what that's referring uh, you gotta to, be an I American guess. for that. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's the one thing I'll say. I don't know anything about the script. I heard a lot of people comparing it to um, the old story. I, I forget what it is. Uh, the, oh, yeah, that the, it's based on? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, is it based off of it or are they just going off of it? But, you know, the, the what's it called? We all read it. I read it back in freshman year, even though it gets banned all the time, about mm-hmm. getting taken to the island or the forest or whatever else, and then they, like, shoot you. Lord of the Flies. Is it Lord of the Flies? I don't think it's Lord oh, of the or, Flies. Or are you thinking Battle Royale? What is it? Not even Battle Royale. There was something that supersedes all of this. The story's been out for the longest time. Dangerous Game. Dangerous Game, where Dangerous. they don't know. They think they're in there the for a game. game. They have no idea yeah. they're the game. It's an mm-hmm. old tale. I remember reading this freshman year, and I thought, this is jacked up. Right, right. Yeah. So people are like, this has been out for a bit. Why this? You adding all of those extra elements to it, because obviously we haven't read the script. I think there's only one trailer out to it. It does kind of remind me of, uh, what was the Ryan Gosling movie with the shooting in the theater? Oh, uh, Gangster Squad. Gangster Squad? Yes. Gangster Squad. Remember they, they altered that, and they delayed it a bit because of the Aurora shooting? Right. Do you remember mm-hmm. Mr. Robot? Uh, yeah, they had the uh, live suicide on TV. They had a live suicide on TV. Delayed for a week. Because of the dude who went up and just shot the uh, cameraman. Mm-hmm. The cameraman who was upset he didn't have the, the spot or whatever it yeah. was. And yeah. So it, it's... I, 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 I get the idea of wanting to delay it because of like insensitivities. When was it scheduled to come out? Fernando, um, let set up real quick. But it also kind of... Makes me think of Sony and the interview. September twenty seventh. And 27th. saying it's going to be a bigger deal than it ever really was. Yeah. That said, so imagine I, the I, interview coming out now. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a very different movie. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think the interview is our closest parallel when we're talking about recent releases uh, because Sony canceled that movie after the North Korean hacks uh, of uh, you know releasing information. Uh, and ultimately that movie went to Netflix where it was a big deal for a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, but not not anything like the kind the of big deal that great. make it out to be because it's not really based on Kim Jong-un in in very serious way. <laughs> um, but when you, when you look at The Hunt, I think that the thing is it's even more uh, less based, uh, even more fictionalized than something like The Interview. Yes, we mentioned those two things that are uh, potentially allusions to our own world, but so many it, things happen. You know, like what? Yeah, yeah. Like I, there, there's no reason why you couldn't use some of those terms as kind of like. It's also at a point where it's like it's not that placeholders big of a deal. for their society, you know. Yeah, or have them ad lib that or whatever else. I mean, that happens all the time in movies. But mm-hmm. one of our favorite shows on Netflix spends an entire episode talking about Donald Trump. We all know we didn't talk about Donald Trump like that back in the day, but we get right. it. Right? Like, they have a line in there, which is, to me, the lowest part of the show, which is like, don't worry about that orange man. He's only got his 15 minutes of screen time. And I was like, that was written in 2019. That wasn't really written in, you know, when this happened in the 90s. Um, So I wonder if we would have just seen those lines and just rolled our eyes or ignored it if worst case scenario. But they made it a bigger deal than it is. I I don't know. Right. And I think, to me, that's really the thing. thing. It's like part of the the only big reason that this ultimately got canceled is uh the media kind of conflating this with a larger issue uh and ultimately you know i I think it's smart for universal to not 
get this movie caught up in the controversy that it was surrounded in. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the controversy was good or exactly, legitimate. Yeah. Uh, and I do think The Hunt is a movie that I, now probably has a lot more eyes on it, which ultimately might be good the for it. The craziest him. marketing move to happen. But I will say this. Yeah. Um, did we figure out when it was scheduled to come out? Yeah, late September, 27th. Late September. Interesting. So it still hasn't even reached its release date. <laughs> it's also interesting to note that uh, the premise of the movie seems to be that the deplorables are the ones who end up being the heroes of yeah. the film. Yeah. But maybe that's worth... Maybe that's fun to ignore just to have a talking point on your show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess. You know. I, I don't think, know. To, go ahead, Fernando. Do you think it would be smart if they wait a couple months and then like drop it on the Netflix? Like, I think... That's like, what, yeah, there's, that's definitely what they're going to do. Or someone else, pick, or another mm-hmm. studio picks it up. Easily. I don't think they're going to release it in theaters, but they're going to do the same thing that they did with the interview and still release it and be able to cash in on that. Because I remember when the interview dropped, it dropped on VOD uh, just for a very limited time. And I pay, I, I have two receipts from Google Play. That's one of them, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but I think the to extend it just a little bit further, do you see this being an issue for other things? Well, you know, I think we're we're in an era where it's very easy to misconstrue things. Uh, another thing that I this situation reminds me of is Dear White People, where there was a lot of controversy around uh, that show, particularly its name. Mm-hmm. Ju- and that was controversy that was from people who hadn't even seen the show itself. Uh, it, it To me, this speaks to a situation where people want to judge a piece of art uh, mm. Prior to and it, prior to experiencing that piece mm. of art, and place moral value on it without actually judging that piece of art's morals, uh, you know, I think it's ultimately something that movie studios have to be conscious of when they're assembling uh, trailers and stuff like that. And titles it's, and posters and everything. You brought up a great point. People complaining about dear white people said the complaints that were in season one, they just never saw it. And I remember my biggest critique was great. You got the attention. But didn't you just ruin the theme of your show? Mm-hmm. We say this all the time with YouTube. Can you name all your videos why it sucks? Of course. <laughs> what are you then doing? And was your point to ever reach somebody to begin with? So this right, right. news, I, the Hunt trailer was out. This news incited things instead. Exactly. And it is used it, it as a talking somebody- point. I think it takes somebody with an agenda unless that movie has an agenda of its own. Again, yeah, we haven't not, seen it, so. That's not my perception of The Hunt. We haven't from seen it what yet, I know. but that said. So you're not on the uh, Grace Randolph, there should never be movies about hunting people bandwagon? No, nah, we divorced for a reason. I don't, I don't agree with her. <laughs> but what this is for is give Betty Gilpin yeah. her leading role. What the hell, dude? Yo, shouts to Betty Gilpin, season three of Glow and, and Beyond, you're, you're a true champion. Uh, we feel for you. The hunt is on her. That's what I really think it is. <laughs> that's, where it's, that's what it's come down to, man. That really stinks. But I, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you guys want to relate it to anything else. One of the topics that we had had earlier was uh, with Ready or Not that came out. It's like that didn't get censored. But at the same time, that has, and I don't want to spoil it, an element to it that doesn't necessarily connect it to today as a deplorable line would for the movie yeah. The Hunt. But right. uh, that idea of censorship from a studio is interesting because considering that we're all really afraid of Disney right now, uh, but they didn't change that Fox movie. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, do, there is that situation with Disney that some people are talking about uh, that apparently Disney is concerned about the impending release of Jojo Rabbit. Catching that uh, tiff. We'll see about it. Do you it. feel like this is a, a similar situation or or, pretend to, or potentially a situation that uh, foreshadows some gloom for movies like Jojo Rabbit? Well, no, because... Jojo, I think Jojo Rabbit sat, and uh, that's a filmmaker who fell <laughs> at the red carpet yeah. because someone pretended to slice his neck open mm-hmm. and then proceeded to just fall down and act dead <laughs> in the middle of an interview. He yeah. said to direct Thor 4 for Disney, and he did that. If he doesn't get his way, we will know about it. 
and I don't think they're messing with him. Uh, so no, I'm not concerned about that. The same reason that I saw the directors not being concerned for uh, Ready or Not when they said they were working with Disney. But that's why I ask. Universal and Sony did pull the plug real quick, and they tend to those tend to pull the plug faster. But again, just like with a Sony Disney debate, I can't really say it's like you see Disney doesn't interfere, right? Because their interference came in booking all of the theaters. To solidify that they have things. You know, I'm sure we've talked about this in the past before. Back with the Hateful Eight. Uh, uh, Force Awakens came out. Hateful Eight was screwed in terms of theaters. Toy Story is still playing in your theater right now because of the way that Disney is able to set up agreements. So while I do right. want to say it's like, oh, they don't have to alter stuff. Yeah, but Disney also has like a, a hold on things that's like so ridiculously crazy that I truly do believe that uh, those articles written about Jojo Rabbit, they needed the views too. Yeah, I, I'm not too worried about that, but I am concerned about universals and I don't know. I really don't know because I haven't seen the movie and I hate judging it not knowing the movie. But in retrospect, seeing again, as we mentioned, the stuff for Mr. Robot and the stuff for Gangster Squad, I agreed with those 100 percent, though, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It does make me feel that maybe a studio like Disney would be afraid to release a movie as political as like Adam McKay's Vice, which came out last year. Mm -hmm. Now, they didn't make Vice, but, uh, you know, should a media get should a movie get in the media's crosshairs and potentially risk upsetting a large portion of the population? I don't think Disney's uh, that worried about upsetting the Nazi por portion of the population. Yeah, exactly. But if it's. If it's upsetting everybody who identifies as a Republican exactly, or a conservative, yeah. yeah, they don't want to do that. Exactly. I agree with you 100%. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I can't really judge how movie studios are going to try to make something or not. But I don't know. What else do you think? I, I would hope there's still just avenues for uh, artistic expression yeah. of important ideas. I, I, think, I, um, I do think we are lucky, though, that it's here because I know in other countries... Um, Films and art are really restricted to the point where, like, if a Absolutely. if a director wants to make a certain movie talking about like an old like era of the country that's still bad, like they will shut that down. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Bro, Wajda, I remember that movie and seeing the behind the scenes on how she, she's a female director in the Middle East, had to direct from a van. Yeah. A van on the phone. Mm. I had to cut, tell the guy out there. Hey, direct it like this. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's so, interesting. Uh, thankfully, we're not at that point yeah. yet. Hey, hey, hey. Question don't, mark? Don't curse us. Don't curse yeah. us. <laughs> uh, but those are most of our thoughts on the cancellation of the release of The Hunt. Let us know what you It'll think out. in the comments below or, again, by emailing us, intercutpod at gmail.com. We got just enough time for one last segment. It's our picks for the week Ooh, in the please. new to see art. Do you need a minute, or should I go to Fernando? All right, go to Fernando real quick right now. All right, All Fernando. Right, let's see. Um, I think this weekend doesn't seem too good. I mean, the Spider-Man. That, yeah, that's why I was looking. Spider-Man like, re-release is coming out. You know, if we want to see our last, our last bit of Tom Holland. Um, oh, so other than re that, it? yeah, they're re-releasing Spider-Man: uh, Far From Home uh, with additional footage. Um, Sick. If you haven't seen. Um, Ready or not, I think that would be a good one to check out. Um, and other than that, I guess just it chapter two seems like the next big thing mm -hmm. to come out. So yeah, my two if you're or my one if you're going out to theaters is Good Boys and Loose. Uh, Good Boys because I, I truly believe it's the funniest movie of the year. I'm glad these gentlemen uh, agreed with me as well. Video coming soon for that. Loose because it is my literal favorite of the year. Haven't made a video on that one yet, but it was reported recently that Neon is losing money on it because of the theaters they released. Oh. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm curious because I don't want to blame Neon, but if you're releasing it in one theater in the city and then it doesn't make money, it's sort of like, wow, no one came to see my show. Did you do advertisement for it? No, the world's against me. It's like, homie, like this is your one-man show? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> Uh, Loose is such a great movie, and I, I just feel people don't know enough about it, which I hold myself responsible only for not making the video on my part, but uh, I was waiting on it because no one has it. Yeah. Peanut Butter Falcon's been doing this weird thing, too, with the way that they release it. It's been released 10 times. It keeps popping out as a new upcoming thing, which to me is like, that's genius. 
That's yeah. you're, you are there every week when someone is looking up for a new movie and you pop mm-hmm. out. That's genius. I don't know if you guys know who NBA Youngboy is. He yeah. released an album, 12 tracks, but he released four at a time, which means that for mm. f- <laughs> for three weeks, this man was on the new to listen because he was just adding to his album. That album <laughs> never left. Oh, you didn't check the new releases that week? He was there for the next two weeks. Genius. That's what I feel Peanut Butter Falcon has done. Loose? I can't make a video because no one's seen it. And it's a weird thing in where it's like, man, where is this movie going to come out? We were just talking about release dates. I don't know what this movie did wrong, but they're just shooting it in the foot. And it's yeah. what leads me to streaming being an option for independent movies the same way that we said uh, how other things should be released when it comes to series. I don't know. But Good Boy's loose. And if you're at home, I think Zach's going to agree with me here. Um, Mine Hunters and... Yes. Uh, what did you just put on your new to see or in your your, your glow? glow because I'm finishing that one up this weekend for sure along with Big Little Lies. Yes, and I'm hoping we'll be able to get to Let Us Explains for at least one of those mm-hmm. two shows that you just mentioned. Yep. Uh, if not both of them. Uh, so yeah, I agree with Art. Go watch Mindhunter. Go watch Glow. Go watch uh, Loose if it's playing around you. Our, Loose was Art's favorite movie coming out of Sundance. My favorite movie coming out of Sundance, Brittany Runs a Marathon, is now in some theaters mm-hmm. as well. So make sure you're on the lookout for that. It, I, you know, I kind of feel like The Farewell may be the better movie to have come out of Sundance, sure. but Brittany just has this really like winning quality. It, it just completely uh, ra- wrapped me up and swept me away, and I was emotional throughout throughout it. I really felt connected with it. I, I think. A lot of people are really going to love it. Uh, it's a really solid romantic comedy and inspirational movie. So I would highly, highly, highly check out the funny, uh, cry-inducing uh, Brittany is. Runs a Marathon. Or uh, watch Succession. Succession Season 2, man. We're, we're a couple episodes in, and it is still amazing. They had one of their best episodes ever uh, this le- past Sunday. Bore on the Floor it is just forever going to be cemented in my mind. Uh, it's still just this really interesting show. I, I'm curious to know some of your thoughts, Art, because we actually yeah, haven't talked have, about You didn't even you know what yet. Now that you've started. I know you like uh, it a lot. Yeah, you pitched it for me, but. Just the way that it's about this kind of corporate culture intertwined with this family dynamic where there's a bunch of backstabbing and then inviting people to Thanksgiving. Yes. You know, it, it's this really interesting balance uh, that it, feel, it feels kind of like an episode of The Office and dude, uh, stop. kind okay, of like no, Game of I'm Thrones. Gonna, you can't keep cutting me off. I was going to wait until you were done to say that. It's shot like The Office, but it's Mad Men. <laughs> yes. What? Really? Do you understand the juxtaposition there? That means it is extremely funny, yet at the same time, it's like, I wonder if he's going to get it. No, you don't deserve it. <laughs> I'm only in the yeah. first episode and the dad is my favorite character without a doubt. He's so good. Without He's so a good. doubt. Uh, I'm excited for you to fall in love with Roman and his one-liners, mm-hmm. but Kendall is ultimately my dude. Uh, that he He's just pulling some real really, really subtle maneuvers this season. I'm excited to see what they do with his okay. arc. Which one's Kendall? Uh, the main guy, Jeremy Strong. That dude is a goofball if there's ever been one. The first, that's when I when I think of how it's shot, I think of the episode yeah. when it zooms the first one where it zooms in on him when they go, no yeah. deal. What? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh definitely check out Succession. That good. might be my favorite show on TV right now. Might be. Okay. Okay. But that's all okay. for this week's show. You can catch more from me, Zach Shevich, by following me on Twitter, Instagram, or Letterboxd at Z Shevich. That's Z S H E V as in Veronica Mars, I C H. And check out my YouTube show, youtube.com slash multiplex show. Fernando, where can people catch more from you? People can find me on Twitter at border underscore logic. Um, I'm on there. Border logic. Yeah, border, border logic. logic. Yeah. And then uh, also, don't forget to check out uh, the new site, www.theatzshow.com. It's new. Um, it will always be new. Always be new. Three years from uh, now. Check out <laughs> the brand new site. The brand new. Hot off the press. Um, yeah, we got <laughs> weekly articles coming out on there. Um, and all of Art's videos are on there, too. So, yeah, check that out. As well as all of the intercuts. Uh, all of our videos, yeah. Fernando's recent article about Blinded by the Light. So, yeah, make sure you go. Uh, read that and check out 
everything else we got on the site, including uh, we're always updating our best movies of the year and best TV of the year. So that's a great place to go to just see what you should be looking out for. <laughs> Art, where can people find more from you? You can find me at the A to Z show. Let me explain all different. Ver- just search that up on anything. Probably be there. If you can't find that, that's OK, because weekly I am here with my voice watching uh, listening, talking about movies, uh, and yeah, it's glad. I'm excited for this upcoming. Definitely stay tuned for what we have coming up because uh, first and foremost, all of the press coverage, like if you follow Let Me Explain, the A to Z show will be tweeting about it, but on Intercut, and especially with, with Zach's, uh, on, on Zach's Twitter, um, we are going to be updating as much as we can because we are going to be doing TIFF together. And we are going to be doing mm-hmm. New York together. Uh, mm-hmm. Come to Chicago. I even invited you. You want to come to Chicago? Yeah, I'll come dude. To press just opened today. Oh, okay. You, you want to come over and have a sleepover? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can, can find us. Can I bring my video game? <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> Bunk beds. Uh, yeah, you can catch us in Toronto. You can catch us in New York. Um, maybe Chicago. I don't know. I don't maybe. know where I live. But other than that, you can catch us every week here on the Intercut Podcast. Yes, you can listen to every episode of the Intercut Podcast on iTunes, on SoundCloud, on Spotify, on your favorite podcatcher. Mine is Overcast. I like the files. And then make sure you're subscribed to not just the audio podcast, but to the video feed as well on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash intercutpod, where you can watch our bright, smiling faces as we break down the latest in entertainment. Find new episodes of Intercut every... We're going to go to Friday, but maybe Thursday if you're doing the audio. So make sure you're subscribed to both. Uh, and then give us a like, leave us a comment, consider heading over to iTunes to leave us a five star, five star review, leave us some words, write some nice things and warm our hearts. Like our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. All of them are at intercut pod to get updates throughout the week from art, from me, from Fernando, from all of our guests here on intercut. Thanks again for tuning in. And until next time, beanbag boys for life. Bro, that almost made my brother cry. <laughs>